Hey there. In this video, we're going to talk about optimistic UI updates or latency compensation. So a couple of weeks ago, I was at, at a conference and I got a question if it's possible to do this with Hilla. And I thought that's a really great idea for a video. So let's take a look at some code and see how we can compensate for a slow backend or a slow connection in a Hilla application. All right, so here you can see the application that we're working with. It's displaying an article and some comments. And the way this works right now is if I type in a comment and say something, you can see the progress bar going here and it takes a while for the actual comment to show up. Now in situations like this, where we're pretty sure the actual result is going to succeed, like in this case, we're not really trying to merge anything. We're just adding a new piece of information to the system. So it's very kind of reasonable for us to expect that that's going to, for the most part, work out well. So in situations like this, we can make the system appear faster by optimistically updating the UI already before we send that message to the server to persist it. And then as the actual persist uh, completes, we can then update the UI to kind of reflect that. So let's take a look at the code we have for our application. So like I mentioned, I'm in a Hill application. I have a endpoint here that kind of simulates a article endpoint. So I have a uh, faked endpoint that gives me an article by an ID, just generates a random article using some faker data. And then we have another API here for adding a comment. And what this does is it sleeps for three seconds and then it returns a simulated saved comment. So essentially adds an ID to the comment that we pass in. Now, if we go into the view here, we can see that we have a standard lit based view and we have a state, which is the article. We have a binder that we use for binding this comment form. And when we connect this view, we go to that article endpoint and fetch an article. We display the article here just in our, in our render method. And then we have this, uh, this comment form here that's using the binder and, and the field bindings here. You can see that's hooked up here to this submit comment. And that method, what it does is it uses the binder to submit. We have an async callback here. So we get the comment from the binder before it hits the server. And what we can do then is, in this case, we're still just calling the server immediately to add that comment capturing the saved comment and updating the article by appending this saved article to the comments. And that's what gives us this uh, functionality that we have right now. So if we wanted to compensate for that latency, in this case, our simulated latency, what we could do is instead of appending this comment to the article only after we get something back from the server, we can move it up here and already append the uh, comment that we get from the binder. So this is the unsaved comment. And then after we've displayed something to the user, we then go to the server and uh, save this. But what we want to do then is be able to kind of replace the placeholder unsaved version with the actual saved version. And you can see here, I've appended this parentheses saved to the comment just so we can see when we're working with the placeholder data and when we're working with the actual data that's been persisted. So we've now kind of, uh, so far if we, well, we could actually run this here. So let's type in something and you'll see that it appears immediately even though this thing is here, but you can also see that we don't get this parentheses saved. So we're never seeing the actual comment come back. And obviously in this case, it doesn't really matter, but in many cases, we would need to know the ID of that comment if we needed to edit or like or do anything else with that. So what we wanna do here is essentially update the article again uh, so that we update the comments to swap out that one. So we'll do essentially the same as what we do here. So we'll say this.article is equal to, and then we uh, destructure the existing article for everything else. And then we'll say that comments is equal to this dot article dot comments. And then what we'll do is we'll do a map. So we'll go over each 
comment. In this case, we'll only have one, but we want to make sure that the solution works for any number. So we'll get a uh, comment, we'll call it C. And then we'll see if C is exactly equal to the comment. So this is the unsaved version of the comment, the same one that we got in here. If that's the case, then we'll swap that out for the saved comment. This should have been a question mark. And in other cases, we'll just return the existing comment. So any other comment we don't want to mess around with. And of course, here in the catch block, if something were to go wrong, obviously, we don't want to have that comment display there as if everything was right. So of course, we should show some sort of a error message, but we also want to go ahead and take out that uh, that one comment that we displayed. So in that case, we'll essentially do the same, except we'll filter. And what we want to pass through the filter is anything that's not equal to that original comment. So so that way, if anything goes bad, we don't end up showing uh, kind of bad data. All right, so let's try this out. Uh, I'm going to add, again, some insightful stuff here. Some insightful stuff. Hit save, and we can see that it shows up here. We can see the progress bar going. And after a while, we can see that the saved version shows up here. All right, so there you have it. A way you can make your application feel faster by compensating for slow backends or latency using optimistic UI updates. I hope the video was helpful for you. If you have ideas for other videos, uh, add them to the comments below. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.